Hi guys, Luton here. Now today I'm going to be showing you how to actually play the Armour 3 multiplayer. Now I've had multiple people asking me that this week because they wanted to get a better understanding. They said they didn't really understand what was happening in the game and they wanted to see and have all the elements broken down so they could really get to grips and understand what it is you have to do in the game and how you work as a team there. Now in Armour 3 multiplayer you obviously can choose your server to begin with which is what we're here for and you can choose various different multiplayer game modes as you can see. Um, the game modes are more like missions really. Um, there are different missions that are set by uh, different users. Something that's quite different um, in Armour is that a lot of the missions are created by users rather than the developer. So it's not like most games where the developer just sets some basic game modes and you play those. It tends to be that the missions are set up by players in the community and then you sort of participate and or can run those on your server. So I'm going to be focusing on the mission that I've been playing mainly, which is Invade and Annex. It's created by Rarick from Ahoy World, and it's a really great sort of tactical objective. And a lot of the principles that you would see in this will apply to other missions, other game modes. And to begin with, there's some other elements to note. As I say, there's some other things here. You can see Wasteland and, and Team Gameplay. There's various different games that you might want to be playing. Uh, you can also see that the server player count varies depending on what the host wants to run it at. And basically, you're going to pick one of these and then just enter into the game, and uh, we'll explain where to go from there. You Get ready to go often you'll see that maybe notes for about team speaks to join and stuff joining team speaks for the channel is always worth it as you can communicate more efficiently with players in the game often the server owners uh, it's often required for pilots as well anyway so let's get in i'm going to join this one here british sergeant's mess it's the one i've been playing on very much recently really enjoy that server so you're likely to see me on there okay well let's get into the game Now, one of the first things that you'll find is you'll come to this section, this menu right here. We can see who is in the game already. And uh, then we also have a list here of positions to take. Now, unlike other titles, okay, you can't just, it's not like Battlefield where you can choose whatever you want to be at any point in time. When you come to the beginning of the server, you're going to be selecting what class, what role you want to play here. So for a standard squad, you're going to have squad leader, a medic, a repair specialist, an explosive specialist, an auto rifleman, as you would imagine, a grenadier, uh, a marksman, and a rifleman. Now each of those is going to have your basic kind of standard skills, but then they're all going to have kind of slightly you know differences between medics can get people back up from when they've been you know taken down killed effectively you go into kind of respawn position repair specialists can repair vehicles explosive specialists have explosive skills mines things like this the uh, the other classes are kind of more general soldiers uh, but then we have other things as well which are a bit more specialist so for example if we scroll down right here you'll see that we have three pilots available vortex pilots okay and again different servers have different settings you might have more or less pilots uh, this position here, Gunner Haymaker, a lot of people are confused about what this is. A lot of people don't know what it is. This is basically the, the, the mortar role, okay? And this guy can take up the mortar position. And then we've got two sniper teams here, sniper and spotter teams. Now, actually, it's interesting. A lot of people don't really like taking the spotter t the role because they don't really understand what it's for. I'll be covering that in another video. But in essence, having a spotter with you, it's kind of like you're a recon team. Um, and the spotter is there to provide support for the sniper protection for, you know, you work together as a team, but also he can range find, etc. Save the sniper a lot of time, and generally you're just, you're just working as a coherent team. Um, and then obviously you have individual squads which can be working together for different objectives, but you don't have to stay with your squad, you can break off and, and work with other squads, different people in the game. Uh, often you might come into a game and the people you want to play with are in a different squad. It doesn't really matter, you can join a different squad. So I'm going to choose a role to play. Uh, obviously, I've been doing a lot of piloting, but I can't pick that. Uh, repair specialist, I find, is actually pretty useful because often uh, you don't have people who are actually willing to repair, uh, which can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, but you see that they're all taken at the moment, so people are really enjoying taking uh, the repair role at the moment. So I'm going to go in as a medic, if there is one. Yeah, here we are, Delta Medic. Now, once I join the game, I can't change my class. I'm a set. And if I do want to change my class, I have to back out and then reselect it. So, here we go. And the other thing to note is that um, a lot of servers tend to have a TeamSpeak available. So when you join the server, it'll often list you a TeamSpeak. So you can just join in there and, you know, speak to the players. But it's also worth noting that um, Armour 3 
has a voiceover network function, okay, it's a voice up, uh, and you can just communicate with players very easily in game. I'll have that turned down, obviously, for this, so that you can hear what I'm saying and, you know, we don't have people chattering all over this. Right, so on entering a server, basically, you'll usually be put into the uh, airstrip base, okay? And you'll see that there's various helicopters coming in here, taking off, and transporting players to the positions which they need to be at. And uh, depending on which server you go on to, you may or may not have competent pilots. But basically, they'll come in for landings here, and you can ask the pilots to take you wherever you want to, or they'll take you to designated positions by leaders. Pilots usually communicate on TeamSpeak as well as in-game, and on some servers it's required that the pilots are on TeamSpeak so they can communicate with uh, server commanders. So if we bring up the map, we'll be able to have a look at what our current objectives are, basically. And also up here you see you've got your briefings, etc, etc. On this server, that doesn't seem to be enabled, but on some servers it will give you listings of what to do. So anyway, here we are right now, and we're at the base. We can see who's here, and generally what's going on. You can see that there's a vehicle depot, you can get repairs for your vehicle, okay? There's also helicopter repairs, helicopter spawn. If your helicopter is damaged or needs fuel, you can land on the repair bay, and it will automatically fix that and re refuel you, similarly with the vehicle repairs, okay? Now then, if we look at the map currently, you'll see that our objective says, this is the objective area, and it says, take air station Mike 26. Also, there is a radio tower here, which is a kind of secondary objective within this one. Uh, if we destroy the radio tower, we will get uh, UAV availability. So in essence, this is pretty much what we have to do right now. Um, and these things will vary. Also, you can see over here, we have a secondary objective. This is a side mission. And this one says, priority target mortar team. You can see there's a couple of guys here. And this area has been marked as a mortar, all right? It says infantry here. Now, just because there's a red dot here doesn't mean that that's necessarily where the objective is. This circle here designates that the enemy mortar team are somewhere in this area, okay? So when you arrive at this location, you have to search for your target. Similarly, within this area, there will be a quantity of enemy. We do not know where they are, we don't know their movements, we don't know their numbers. So you have to be extremely careful when entering an area. Because, as again, unlike other titles, the enemy are unbelievably dangerous. All right? If you just open fire as soon as you see an enemy, chances are they're just going to turn around and lay down a ton of much more accurate fire and eliminate you so fast. So you really have to work together as a team, you have to work out safe landing zones and you know move towards your objectives. Now you can see currently on the map here, you see that the uh, helicopters are running transport back and forth between these landing zones, alright? And you can see here we've got two landing zones designated, Eileen and Carolyn. Now these can be designated whatever you want to, and you can also label the map whatever you want. So for example, uh, if I wanted to designate a landing zone myself, okay, I could go here, double click, and then I can insert a marker. So I could put here, LZ, Maxwell. And then this becomes designated on the map. Similarly, if you wanted to note troop movements, etc. And you can see there, look, the enemy mortar team has just been neutralized. So the guys here have found the targets, eliminated them. And then it says up here on the right, keep on with the main objective. And if anything else comes along, we'll get that on the go. So for example, say these guys down here are moving in this area, and we can freak them out a little bit. <laughs> if they see some enemy, then you might want to bring up your map to let other people know that there's enemy in the area. So you could just put it out here, and you could put enemy sighted, or you could put enemy troops, or give numbers. So you can use it to basically put any kind of information down. Now, once you put a marker down, maybe the situation will change. Maybe this is no longer safe, for example, okay? Or maybe, you know, you just want to sort of remove it to clear the map. Maybe if objectives change, maybe it's not uh, a 
relevant anymore. I mean, for example, you know, if the objective changes to up in the north, this is not really going to be a, a very useful landing zone. All you would do there is hover this over the objective and uh, just press delete, and that will remove that straight away. Again, as I say, you might want to update information. So, for example, if it says enemy infantry, well, if you kill them all, you don't want people thinking they're still there, so you can delete it. Um, similarly, sometimes landing zones become unsafe. So, for example, right now you can see the guys are dropping off a lot of people up here. Now, if they start engaging combat, then that's going to draw enemies towards this area, probably. All right, and this has happened to us recently. I've played it today. All right, uh, we're starting to drop in, drop in, and the first sort of three, four drops we did were totally safe. And then all of a sudden, we started having anti-aircraft troops, and you know we were getting shot down. So the area, you know, changed, and we had to update the situation. I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to move away from the base here because the helicopter noise, and also some guy beeping at us. Now when you complete side missions it can actually give you benefits um, and you'll see down here there's a bay which says side mission rewards and from here you can actually sometimes get side mission rewards like things you know maybe like a, an extra helicopter vehicles and so on and so on so completing those side missions is actually very beneficial also for example if you have a mortar team side mission they can actually be you know very negative because as soon as you suddenly encounter enemies you'll find that they call that in and you suddenly start taking mortar fire so it can be very very dangerous and it's it's worthwhile completing those side missions but they're also just you know uh, very entertaining and a good uh, good bit of fun so basically what would we do when we first encounter the base? Well, you know, you're going to be looking at seeing what's happening. You might be listening to people on the voice over the network communication and just hearing what's happening in general. But if you don't want to do any of that and you just want to literally get straight in with the game, you'll be provided with a kit which is pretty useful to begin with. And, you know, you can see right here that this is where everything is happening. So we can prepare our kit essentially, which I will do. Also, you'll see that, you know, depending on, you know, it's, it's kind of twilight, it's night time. It's going to be getting dark soon, all right? So, for example, coloured smoke, which is your standard kind of marking tool, it's probably not going to be very useful at this time of the evening because nobody's going to see it. So, therefore, taking things like chem lights is much more useful. Chem lights are little glow sticks which you can drop on the ground to designate landing objectives or so on. Now, I'm going to change up my kit here a little bit. So, if I press I, it'll bring up my inventory. And you can see right here that this white bar designates how much you can carry on that kit so how much space you've got so I'm, I'm carrying a little bit here but I can't really carry too much more this middle carrier here you can see I've got a little bit more space and this one here now this is what I'm carrying on this kit right here if I click on this it shows all these other things so I've got a lot of smoke etc and I'm carrying an assault pack with 11, you know, I've got my med kit for obviously reviving people, remember I'm a medic, and my first aid kit here. So I've got quite a bit of space in my backpack. I'm also carrying right now, I've got an MX 6.5mm, alright, it's an assault rifle and I've got a laser pointer on there. Um, now I don't have any optic whatsoever, don't have any missiles, uh, there's various other bits and pieces that we can take on board here. So I'm going to check, and we've got a couple of chem lights, alright. So this is for your GPS map, got my radio uh, compass and my watch okay so again some things can be time intensive you will have night vision as standard so here's the night vision you can see it's a little bit too bright still to be using night vision um, but we're going to be needing that pretty soon you can hear the direct this is direct communication so if people are nearby you can hear them speaking um, so what do we want to do we want to change out our gear a little bit okay so let's go change out our gear. Going to these boxes which are generally in the spawn positions enables you to change out your gear. Now this is to uh, resupply. I'm going to try and get away from this guy a little bit right here. So you can resupply. If I use my scroll wheel, okay, it gives me a range of options. Now the scroll wheel as well can be useful for helicopter situations, okay? So for example you can see here at the heli I have a range of options as to what I want to do. Do I want to get in as the left door gunner, right door gunner, the back, get in my inventory, etc, etc. So what we're going to do, resupply, and then I'm going to go to change gear loadout. 
I'm going to turn the background volume down a little bit here so I can uh, focus a little bit more on what's happening in the game. Right, so basically, a couple of things. What would we want, perhaps? Well, we might want binoculars, because that can be kind of useful. However, it's night. It's going to be dark soon, so I probably don't need those right now. Um, I will need an optic for my gun, though, because I don't currently have an optic. There's a range of other guns, but I'm going to stick with this gun. I'm just going to change out my optic. So again, if I go magazines here, this is going to give me a range of weapon choices, all right? So that's your magazines, chem lights, things like that. And then we come to items. And items gives you a range of optings. So if we scroll down to here, you can see we've got a range of other optics available. So for example, we've got the Arco, the RC Red, the Hololite, SOS, etc. So all of these are different optics. All right. I'm going to go with the Arco because I like the fact that it gives you two options. So I'm going to click Add Item there, and this will sit, you can add it to your gun or inventory. So when I click it on there, that's going to add it straight away to my gun, and you can see this already here. Actually, I wasn't going to include this in the video, but uh, my squad mates were chatting there, which was kind of, uh, it was giving us a lot of talk, which I didn't want to include on the video. If you're in-game and you want to mute players, because sometimes you do get some players who are just talking, as you would expect from gaming, a lot of nonsense, all right? And uh, if you want to mute those players, you can just hit Shift and P, all right? And that brings up the list of players. And then you can just go to these guys. Now, this guy, Abdullah, he was just talking, talking, talking whilst I was trying to record here. So you're just going to click on his name and then just go mute. And that will automatically mute that person. And then you just go Shift P and you're back in the game. So we've added our scope to the gun. And uh, we're going to see if there's any other pieces of equipment that we want here. So if we go back to... I, well, let's go to magazines, actually. Now, I've got plenty of rounds on me, okay? Like I've got 11 mags, all right? But we've got a lot of smoke grenades here, and I really don't need smoke grenades because it's going to night, all right? So we're going to remove these smoke grenades. Chem lights, however, are great, but different chem lights with different brightnesses. And green, it's not very good, actually. So I'm going to drop green. I'm going to go with yellow. I'm going to take six yellow, and I'm going to take a couple of reds. And as I say, these can be very useful. There's other things like flare rounds, which can be used, mines we've got here. And we've also got explosives, various different bits and pieces like this. And take a couple of explosive charges, because sometimes uh, it can be useful, obviously, for detonating things. Um, but the main thing that explosives tend to be useful for is if, for example, a heli crashes, there's no engineer around. If you don't destroy it, it won't respawn. And a lot of people will be asking things like, can anyone destroy this helicopter? So you need to run over, whack a charge and blow that up for them. Okay, so what else might we need? We've got all our weapons, so we don't need that. We don't need anything else from weapons. Backpacks and kit, this is all just kind of optional stuff that you can choose to personalize your character. And again, within items, again, you have various kind of, um, you know, camo kits, etc. for your player. Hats and so on and so on and so on. Uh, there's the, for example as well, there's the wetsuit if you want to be going underwater, ghillie suit if you want to be a sniper, so you might want to change up uh, how your player looks if you want them to be, uh, you know, working efficiently. Uh, pilots for, you know, helmets for pilots, etc, etc, etc. If you want to specify uh, what kit, okay, so we go to weapons, you've got rifles, scoped, so we go rifles, it's going to minimise the list just to rifles. Scoped, again, what you can scope. Heavy, don't have anything there. Launcher, it's just got your launchers and pistols. We just got pistol options. So again, you can kind of specify. Same with the items. If you want just attachments, okay, you can go with just attachments as well. All right. So anyway, that's the kit there. Right, so basically now we need to head out to our objective. We've done everything we want to do. We can choose different choices about how we want to get there. We can take helicopter transport or we can take vehicles on the ground. I'm going to go with a helicopter transport. So let's get in here. Okay, heli's on the ground. I'm going to sit in the co-pilot seat. Gives us a little bit of a better view. And remember the channels can be used by using your arrow keys above the space bar and you can go to different channels to ask for help and you know communication. So you can communicate with other players what's happening. Now you can see the majority of the players are up here. I have a feeling I don't really need to ask where we're going, he's probably going to just drop us straight up to here. And the pilot here is going to be waiting for other players to come. Uh, he wants to make it worth his while 
to obviously be transporting players. So he's going to wait for a little bit uh, before actually taking off and uh, wait for the people. You can see like the pilot is running night vision goggles. Okay, so obviously it's uh, it's getting to night time. He needs these to successfully navigate where we're going to. Okay, so it looks like we're on the way. Now normally if I was in an actual game I'd be communicating and I'd sort of say, you know, how long till dust off pilot, uh, how long are we waiting to move out, and I might ask him what LZ we can go to, might say if there's any options, so can I say like, okay, can we go to the south LZ, can I go to the north LZ, where do we want to go to? You can see we're on route right here. Now again, uh, it's kind of twilight, it's not really super late yet, but if I want to enable my night vision goggles, I can do. And you can see, although your kind of field of view is, you know, covered a little bit, you you can see things pretty clearly. And uh, oh, what the crap was that? Okay, and we're coming in on the ground. So it's not a very long journey, you think? But uh, let me tell you. And you can hear already hear that crackling. We're taking fire now. Again, scroll wheel, get out. We're on the ground. I'm going to get to some cover quickly because it sounds to me like we're taking some fire. Now we've got rifle two kilometers away. Bit strange that there's a uh, barn up here. That looks to me like uh, that was a, an ex objective. Right, helicopters us back off to the base for another transport run. Now we obviously can hear things happening right here, but we don't know what's going on. Sounds like there's some explosions up ahead. Now we need to look where we are. You can see we've been dropped here. He's dropped us way out of the landing zone. So I need to uh, tab up the road here. I need to go east. If I want to check my position, look at my compass, and you can see the east up here. We're going to be going this way. You can hear the crack or a fire there, so we need to be a little bit careful about what's coming up. I think I'm definitely going to go to night vision right now, though, because uh, it's getting pretty dark, and I'm having a bit of a hard time seeing. This is important to look, though. Look at how visible these guys are up on the ridgeline. Okay, see that flash? That flash there is enemy tracers. Uh, Alex in Alpha 3-1 is asking for a medic. A lot of guys getting taken down. You see Exocet here. The green dots basically represent someone who's been taken down. If you look at the uh, text log here, Tsunami was killed by Exocet. They obviously perhaps crashed or I don't know what happened there. Something else I want to point out about uh, the danger area as well. If you're flying helicopters, now you might think that this red danger area represents, you know, you don't go within that and you're safe. No. Okay, basically imagine drawing another circle about this big around that circle. That's going to be the, the danger range for helicopters. Okay, because about where I am right now, a helicopter may still take fire. In fact, that's probably why that guy dropped us back here. Because if he dropped us up here, we're much closer to objectives. And uh, you might come under fire from AA missiles. Um, and again, unlike with Battlefield and other titles, um, you will get no warning of incoming missiles. Not, not always, anyway. And, um, you know, quite often you'll be flying along and bam, you're just dead on the ground. So it's extremely dangerous. And you're better off just being very careful and um, you know sort of trying to stay at range from them also as I say now these guys are kind of coming in far but for example if I want to designate a landing zone look up on the top right here you see how it says red light that's designating my kind of grenade options if I hold control and hit G okay we'll scroll through yellow light red light so I've got a couple of options don't have any frag grenades or explosive grenades anything like that but I do have my chem lights so I can once I've selected that, I just press G, solo, and you can see I'm going to drop a few chem lights down. And that's going to designate for the guys a landing zone, all right? And again, if you really wanted to, you could throw one way down there and way down there. So this is going to be a good landing zone now for the pilots. All right, let's move out. Now this is, you can see the trace of fire going off there from uh, cannons and guns. This is trench foot, this is generally a mortar position, okay? You often get mortar units up here laying down fire. 
Right, let's move up here and see what's happening. And you can see players coming up reviving. Right, so these guys are laying down fire. Looks like some of our guys are pulling back. I'm going to turn the sand up a little bit now because they were kind of in the combat zone. We want to hear these fire off going off. Six hundred meters, bearing one three five. There's the laser sights of the uh, players, by the way. Okay, so we just had a bearing uh, one three five. So if I bring up my compass, and you can see if we go to one three five, which is here. Okay, there's 130, there's 135. So we've got target there. And also notice it said 600 meters. 600 meters is pretty far. Okay, so I wouldn't worry too much. See, there's a lot of movement going on up here. Okay, let's get on the move. Now, as I say, I've kind of talked you through how to set up and get into the game. Um, I should point out things like, for example, if you're preparing your kit, if you want to run with a different weapon or whatever, if you want to run with a different weapon, you're going to have to take out different mags that complement it. So, for example, if you're taking um, a magazine rifle, all right, and uh, you're going to want to take the correct, uh, you know, rounds for that. So, if you've got Sounded pretty close. I was going to say if you're if you're taking 6.5 mil gun, you want to take 6.5 mil rounds. Otherwise, it won't work, obviously. And you can take silencers, etc., etc., whatever you want. It sounds like some of our guys are firing in onto a position. Don't know if they're really firing at anything or whether they're just uh, literally firing for the sake of firing. Looks like got guys down here though. Anyway guys, I'm going to finish up here today. This is just my first look at moving up to the position. In the second video coming up soon, we'll actually move on into the base and we'll look at how some of the combat engagements work, how you can engage targets, how you can search for targets. Thanks for watching today. I hope this has been a good introduction. It's brought us up to the point of combat. And I say next time, we'll look forward into actually engaging and searching for targets. Like the video guys if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time for some more Armour 3.